that, I think uh, it's time to turn turn the mic over uh, to Lloyd to uh, to give us a getting started uh, walk walk through right. and and demo. All right. Well, thank you, Nicole. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Lloyd. I'm the CTO of Carbonated. Um, uh, we this, this, before I get into the demo, just a quick history about us. We have been on the lumberyard side of things. Uh, we've been on lumberyard since uh, 1.09, if uh, if anyone still remembers that from circa 2017 ish. So we've been in this code base um, uh, for a very long time, and we followed. Uh, the O3D path uh, for uh, since its inception, essentially. Um, and we're super excited about it when we always have been, and we are chomping at the bit um, as a studio to really, really get in there. Um, so uh, I've been asked to give a little uh, uh, getting started uh, a tutorial for you all. Um, uh, the way that I approached it is how I approach uh, any uh, any particular engine, which is, uh, you know, cut out all the cruft. What is the straightest and fastest path to code? Because um, at that point, I can build my game and do the fun stuff and everything. I just kind of browse from there. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Um, and I please this one. Awesome. I think that's it. Um, can everybody see a black screen with a? We sure can. Oh. Fantastic. Okay, so um, uh, to start this off, I'm going to make the uh, the assumption that uh, that whoever looking at O3D has downloaded the latest version from the website, click the install button, and just installed it. Um, and then, uh, and then once it's installed, you uh, you run uh, O3D and brings up the project manager, uh, which I will do now. Right, this is this is pretty much pretty straightforward, right? Download, uh, install it, and run the project manager. Um, from here, um, usually the, the very first thing that I would do is I create my uh, create a new project. Uh, so uh, uh, find the new project button, click on that, create a new project. Um, and we're gonna give it, I'm just gonna leave the name there. And uh, because um, I'm very specific about where I want things, I wanna change this to over here. Um, and uh, uh, I usually just go with the default. Right, I, I just want to see what a sort of a blessed setup is for for a game engine. Um, O3D is no exception, so I just select the, the default, um, and I just create the project. I figure configure gems and whatnot. For me, that comes later. Again, this is the straight path to getting to code because I want to make me a game, and that's really all I care about. So create my project. Uh, once to be rebuilt. Um, once it's in here, you can uh, you can build it. It takes a little bit of time. I'm going to skip that step um, because um, I already set one up um, uh, uh, this morning called my project. Um, so just know that you 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 click the build project button, you wait a little bit, and then uh, and then you can open up there. So I'm going to switch on over to the my project project. I'm going to open up the editor, um, and that is on a different screen. So I'm going to wait until it. Uh, until I have something to show, and I'll drag it on over. It's the uh, uh, it's the blessings of having so many monitors that things have to be pulled over all over. Uh, one second, okay. So here's the editor. So uh, when you open the editor, it's already defaulting uh, default, of course, to to the my project, the thing that you selected. Um, so now I want to create a simple level, right? So very simple level. Um, and I'm just going to call it, you know, simple level. Right. Uh, by default, O3D uh, creates you a nice little uh, uh, a shader ball level. Um, you can kind of scoot around, look at things, look at things, whatnot. Pretty cool. But again, this is my my straight line shot to code. Um, and so uh, all I want to do uh, is I want to see if I can man manipulate something. In this case, it's going to be the shader ball, right? Um, it's this guy over here. Um, and because I just think that way, I want to create a different entity to create uh, to manipulate the shader ball itself, right? Putting something on top of it. So I'm going to spin this guy around. I create. I wrote a simple Lewis script this morning. I'm not going to bore anybody with the uh, with the, with typing it all out. But I just made a little entity spinner. Um, and the code for it. Fudira wants to stare at my amazing examples of software engineering, there you are. Um, very simple Lua script, right? Uh, defines a couple of properties, 
uh, attach itself to the tick bus so that I can uh, can get uh, frame by frame updates. And I'm just gonna spin the entity around the Z axis, right? Um, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna hover over here if anybody wants to peruse. Um, but suffice to say, I'm gonna uh, uh, assign the entity to spin. I'm gonna say 45 degrees per second. And if all goes well, it spins. Hooray. Um, so uh, this is all useful and cool, but um, but I like me some native code. Uh, so uh, I also, in any engine, I want to see what it looks like from a scripting standpoint, as well as from a C++ uh, standpoint as well, because you know that's where my bread and butter is. That's where I live and all that. Uh, so I want to see what, uh, what the, uh, the, the code looks like and how to put that together. So to do that, very simple, um, uh, easiest way, uh, you know, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with uh, where everything lies, you just open up the project folder. Uh, O3DE uh, automatically uh, through CMake and whatnot generates a solution for you. So that's my solution, it sits in build windows. Open up that sucker. And wait for it to load. And here we go. Um, the the very brief i'm not going to go into too much detail here because everything is online and we i can talk about this for hours but i will save you all the uh uh, uh the verbosity there um uh, i create a very simple uh, entity spinner uh, entity spinner component um uh nick this is what i was talking to you about this morning <laughs> as i was trying to get this set up um but i create a very simple uh component does the exact same thing as as the the lewis crop does um, right, it uh, it connects to the to the tick bus uh, over here, right? Just simple uh, tick bus connect and disconnect, um, and on every frame, it just rotates uh, whatever entity um, I selected, right? Um, and everything you know is uh, set up. I got my I got my reflection uh, set up here so I can get saved out. Uh, I got my my editing. Um, a handler setup, everything's uh, good to go. And the way, once this is compiled, you know, you just hit the compile button, uh, launch the, the editor. And once this is set up, then I'm going to get, get rid of my Lua script here. Um, I added it under my miscellaneous um, category. Same thing. Take my shader ball over there. I'm going to spin it at 45. And then if all goes well, there it goes. Oh, um, so for me as a as an engineer, that is a very short, very straightforward, uh, very clear path to code. At this point, I can make my game, right? I can um, uh, uh, produce all the the gems. I can uh, connect. I can I can uh, hook them into my game as I need. I can pull in assets. I can explore all the different components that's made available to me. I'm ready to make my game, both in scripting and in uh, in C plus plus. And so I hope that this is uh, this is useful for folks as the shortest possible way that I know of to start making a game in O3D. Cool.